Be the Talk, Episode 176, featuring Judy Hoberman. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Judy Hoberman. Judy, are you ready to talk? I am so ready to talk. Thank you. <laughs> Judy Hoberman is president of Walking on the Glass Floor and Selling in a Skirt. She is an international speaker, trainer, coach, author, and mentor. Judy is the author of Selling in a Skirt, Famous Isn't Enough, Pure Wealth, and Walking on the Glass Floor. Judy's philosophy, women want to be treated equally, not identically. Judy Hoberman, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. Looking forward to our conversation. I'm really looking forward to it as well. You recently were at TEDx Turtle Creek, and you spoke on the greatest missed opportunity. Please take us behind the talk, Judy. Well, the greatest missed opportunity, the theme of that truly was about uh, – in between the lines and outside the lines. And so what I talked about was being misjudged, being prejudged, the things that we do naturally without even thinking about it. So imagine if you are prejudged and what you really need is what people are telling you you don't need. Or imagine if you are somebody that has a disability in any form. It could be stuttering. It could be anything. And people assume that you have got it all together. So my talk really takes you through the different facets of of missing out on the greatest people that are standing right in front of you because you prejudge them. Give us a couple of um, examples of how we do this in everyday life, Judy. I mean, there there are so many out there, but what what are a couple that are maybe, uh, if you don't mind, personal to you that really started you on this journey of of fleshing uh, some of this out as well as the ramifications uh, to our own reputation and our social equity when when we do that unconsciously or consciously? Well, let's start with the fact that I was part of a mastermind group, and the same as everybody else in this mastermind group, we were looking to build your business, and the facilitator gave everybody a coach to work with, and she said to me, you don't need anybody, look at you. Look at me what? Look at me because I was dressed well? And so that happened my entire life. You don't need any help. Look at you. You're all put together. That's a, that's a horrible thing to be the subject of. But think about in the business world. Imagine if you're looking for somebody amazing who walks in and maybe they're not dressed well, but they have exactly what you need and you don't even give them an option to even sign a, you know, fill out an application. Or somebody that's dressed to the nines and you think, well, this is the person and they have no skills whatsoever. So it's, that's what happens. You know, you, in, in less than a second, you've made this assumption that this person is this or this. Go into a restaurant, you sit down and you think, okay, that person over there is not happy and this person over there is, you know, gregarious. You have no idea. You're just making an assumption and we do it every second of the day without even thinking about it. I think uh, for, for anyone that is really into personal growth, obviously you're into personal growth. I'm into personal growth. Everyone who's uh, kind of woke and aware out there, we're, we're going to know that this principle that if you are, you know, if, if you're the smartest person in the room, for example, you need to find a new room. You need to find right. a new group of learners. So when you started off answering that last question, saying that the people were kind of looking at you and making an assumption that you had it all together, how, yeah, I, I, I get it. I think I get it. How devaluing to your potential to become even more and even greater and add even more uh, value to other people than you currently uh, are able to do. Um, I mean, what, what, what was your thought? What was going through your mind when, when you heard that from people? Well, you know, since I've heard it my entire life, at one point, you, you get to that point where you're not going to listen anymore. And when she did that to me and she went around this room, I said to her in front of everyone, I said, was I just voted off the island? And she laughed and she said, oh, no, I'll personally coach you and it's just $10,000 more. And I'm like, and I said, well, what does that mean? You know, she said, and then she repeated again, just look at you. And so it, you, I am in the same position as everybody else. And maybe because I show up looking differently doesn't mean I don't need exactly what you need or someone else needs. I was in that room for the same reason. But by that time, I had really had enough, you know, and so and then she, you know, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And she says, fine, I'll give you a coach, <laughs> you know. 
You know, that's what I'm saying. So my value, well, your self-confidence goes way down, even though people think that you've got it all going on, because they think that you're not worth spending time with. So it's, it's, it's a rough thing. Wow. Well, I mean, the story is getting worse and worse. <laughs> it's, it's, it does get worse I mean, that, worse. it's not just a devaluing of, of your potential. It was like a massive upsell out of nowhere before, before she even demonstrated her own value. <laughs> it's just violating so many different things. Hey, talk universe, don't do this at home. <laughs> right. Don't totally. do this at home. And, and I, I love, I, I don't, no, I don't, I don't love these stories and I don't love hearing about these stories. They're, they're awful, but, um, I, I, I appreciate how stark the contrast is, is what I'm trying to say from the way that, that we should treat one another and the way that a mentor should treat people that, that he or she could potentially mentor if, if they uh, make the grade. <laughs> so. Right. And the other part of it is, I yeah. mean, you walk, when you walk into a TED Talk, you have assumptions of what you're supposed to see or who's supposed mm -hmm. to be there. And don't you think that people made assumptions about the speakers? Don't you think people made assumptions about me? And I knew they did. I knew they did. And so I challenged everyone, whatever assumptions you have, before you leave today, you have to go back and apologize because you're doing things that are just not, they're not fair. It's what it is. It's just not fair. And in, in your entire life, you run into life isn't fair. But if you can reverse somebody's, you know, mindset just a little bit, it, life becomes a little bit more fair. Judy, how are some ways, um, I'm going to make this a little bit personal. What, when are some times maybe that you've caught yourself doing the same thing? Cause we all do it. Uh, you know, what, what have you done to kind of catch yourself and then retrain yourself, uh, when, when perhaps you're aware of, of, of slipping into assumptions for other people? When I was, uh, recruiting, um, I was a, a man, an agency manager in the insurance world. When I was recruiting people to come in, the first thing I did, the first thing you see is the person. So obviously I would say good, bad, you know, they'll make it, they won't make it. And I had to keep saying to myself, no, you don't know who this person is. And the ones that show up and they're, they look like superstars are the ones that never make it. You know, so I had to retrain myself to just say, okay, this is a person and let me have a conversation with them so I can figure out who they are and if I can even help them through this journey. So, I mean, that's when I really realized that not only are people doing it to me, but I'm also doing it. Yeah. And so I yeah. try not to do that at all. So not, and, not easy. I, I'm thinking about just the whole issue of just because we, we understand don't judge a book by the cover. And we understand we all have bias and we, we need to work to, to recognize, be humble enough to recognize that we all have that tendency. We're humans. And, uh, as uh, another guest put it, you know, bias can actually be good because it helps us filter. Um, I guess the, the question that, that I have is just where does, uh, where does, uh, presenting well? And, you know, looking your best and putting your best foot forward, where does that come into the question? Uh, where, you know, I'm, I'm wondering um, how to balance those two things and how you would see those two things. I think no matter what, you should always show up in as you, authentically you, but in your best self. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a position or you're looking to meet someone, you're building a relationship, whatever it is, you should show up today as you will tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So being authentically showing up is is huge. But it doesn't mean just because you put on your dress, your best dress or whatever that that's what it isn't. It's about you because your confidence is what's going to show up first. Yeah, your outfit might be great, but if you're looking down and you're really, you know, not even engaging in, in eye contact or anything, what good is it? You have to walk in as if you are truly confident because that changes your mindset. You know, and, and that story goes on with you forever. You know, those stories that people think about you, it's just they just keep going. Well, they certainly do. And we've been enjoying this conversation with Judy Hoberman. Uh, her TEDx Turtle Creek uh, talk was called The Greatest Missed Opportunity. And uh, we're going to be right back for the Blitz Round in just a minute with Judy. People ask, how could I start a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one -on -one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com.
And we're back with Judy Hoberman. It is time for the Blitz Round. This is where I'm going to ask Judy a series of either-or questions related to the actual prep and performance of her recent branded talk. Judy, are you ready? I am ready. I'm holding on. All right. Well, here's question number one. Were you selected to speak or did you apply? I applied. Are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I'm a blender. How did you blend? I blended. What I did was first I I decided what the talk was going to be about, but I had to improvise because there were going to be stories, and I knew if I memorized, I could actually forget something, and that's the worst feeling of all. Yeah, it, it, I know that's. I know that feeling. Uh, yeah. I, I know how that goes. Uh, did you have nerves, or were you in the zone, or neither, or both? Um, beforehand, I apologized to everyone that I love because I was very snarky because I was petrified to do this, <laughs> even though I do speak. But I was totally in the zone, and as soon as the talk was just about over, I broke down. Totally broke down. And so I knew that was going to happen because I had to rearrange my talk so I could get through it. Wow. Uh, So uh, what was a a tip, a technique, or a tool that helped you, Judy? So a friend of mine does uh, NLP, and she said to me, "Uh, tell me, when you think of a TED Talk, what's the first thing that you hear? Well, when when you watch a TED Talk, what's the first thing you hear is the applause, okay? And then she said to me, what are you afraid of? I said, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss between the lines and uh, outside the lines and all the themes. And then I said, she said to me, okay, is there anything that you're going to wear that means a lot to you? And I said, my wedding band. She said, okay, so before you put your foot on the st- on the stage, I want you to hear the applause. I want you to know you're not going to miss anything. And I want you to turn your wedding band. And she said, is there any color that calms you down? I said, purple. She said, okay, so now listen, see the purple, turn your wedding band, and then you're not going to forget anything. And I did it right before I got on stage. I got on stage. I was fine. But somewhere in between, like the first five to six minutes, I felt like everything coming up. And I turned my ring again. And my husband happened to get a picture of me turning my ring. That's the only thing that got me through it. And this was uh, your speaking coach that that suggested it, or your NLP she, coach? Which she's she's a she's a colleague of mine, and she a happens colleague. to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's powerful tip, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is, right. Uh, that's uh, Judy bringing the value here to Talk Universe today. Ooh. I've not heard that before. I'm a uh, you know a a, a uh, significant uh, appreciator of NLP, and, and once once you find out the way that that we can be uh, wired as well. So uh, hey, we all know it is a performance. So. Uh, besides the ring uh, um, tip, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your speech? Um, so right before my speech, one of the other uh, speakers, I asked her if she was going to be watching my speech, and she said she was probably going to be there. And she, I, she said to me, why did you come to the dress rehearsal the day before? And I said, because we were supposed to. And she said, look at you. You didn't need it. Right before, right? Right. That's the face that I gave. And that's, and, that's what we started the interview with. That's, that's the same. That's like, you can't, you, you can't, uh, you'll shoot your eye out, Ralphie, from the Christmas story. This is the, rec- <laughs> the exact right. thing people have been assuming about you your entire life. Right. And I said oh. to her, okay, we'll talk after I speak. And when, <laughs> when I was done, <clears throat> she came up to me and she hugged me and she said, I didn't know. That was it. That was that was my confirmation that somebody actually understood what I was going through. How did you not become triggered by your friend right before? Okay, because I, I would think that would uh, that would be kind of triggering having somebody put the same assumption that you've spent, you know, hours and hours and out, you know, the average fifty hour might have been much much more than that, and they say that to you from from a friend right before you get up to speak. How did that not trigger you? Because I knew it was a message that needed to get out. <clears throat> and if I had done anything differently and not been able to get the talk out, then the, the, whole, the whole 50 hours, 100, whatever hours it was, everything was for nothing. And I truly believe that it's a very um, major message that happens to everybody, and they really needed to hear it. We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Judy Hoberman, 
And I wanted to take just a moment to let you know where you can find her talk. It's called The Greatest Missed Opportunities. It's all about assumptions. It's all about these uh, these biases that we have, how to overcome that. You can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. And while you're there, you can click on that link. And you can check out Judy's website, which is walkingontheglassfloor.com. Again, it's walkingontheglassfloor.com. Dot com. And we'll be back with Judy Hoberman in just a moment for the final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at bethetalk.com. And we're back with Judy Hoberman. It is time for the final word of advice. My final word of advice is make it about a story that means something to you. Don't just create something because you think it's valuable. It has to be something that touches people because otherwise it's a talk and it's not anything that's inspirational or motivational or takeaways or learning or whatever. So make it your story and don't worry about if you forget a line. It's your story. Just make it your own. Judy Hoberman, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.